Hi, good morning, everyone. I would like to introduce John Pernius, the founder and executive chairman of St. George Mining Limited with ASX ticker code SGQ, Sierra Gulf, Quebec, an explorer of critical minerals. With over 25 years of experience, he, had, he has led the company's global expansion, including the acquisition of the 100% owned Araxá project in Brazil. Araxá is a major rare earth and niobium resource, positioning St. George as a leader in the energy transition mineral sector. Good morning, John. How are you? Hello. Very good. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, John, I'm very keen. I want to dive right in. So um, for all of our viewers today, can you please give us a bit of a quick overview on St. George and what really makes the Araksha project such a game changer? Yeah, thank you. Uh, we have uh, traditionally been an explorer in Western Australia, uh, ASX listed company based in Perth. Uh, we've been looking for nickel and lithium in Western Australia. Both of those commodities totally out of favour at the moment. Uh, the supply response has been shattered the commodity in those uh, prices. So we've been looking around for another company maker project, mm -hmm. uh, one with commodities that had stable market dynamics uh, and also a project that was very advanced. We didn't want to have exploration risk. So we found that with the uh, Arasha project in mm -hmm. Brazil, mm -hmm. um, advanced project already had a lot of drilling, confirming economic mineralization, high-grade niobium, only three uh, producers in the world, so there's a big supply concentration there, and uh, high-grade rare earths as well. And we're all seeing the, the geopolitical uh, scramble at the moment for rare earth deposits. So fantastic company maker project that we've acquired this year. Excellent. Um, I want to talk more about the fact that there's only three supplies of um, niobium. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Uh, the biggest one is our next-door neighbour in uh, Arasha. Uh, CBMM, they produce about 80% of the world's supply mm -hmm. uh, and we're right next door to them. I can literally have one foot in our tenement and the other foot in their project tenement. So we've got very similar geology, very confident we're going to be able to produce similar commercial neobium products. Excellent. Um, with such an exotic name for your project, can you please help me understand geography-wise geography where is this project actually located? Yeah, so obviously it's Brazil in the state of Minas Gerais. So mm -hmm. Minas Gerais has got a long history of uh, mining, mm -hmm. uh, really, really well uh, understood permitting and environmental risks. Uh, and of course, we're right next door to a very big operation already, uh, CBMM's uh, Niobian mine. On the other side of us is uh, Mosaic, a big fertilizer company with a big phosphate project. So we're about five kilometers from Arasha town itself. Okay. Uh, that gives us access to a ready workforce and mining services. Uh, and also the town really lives off the mining industry. So they're really quite welcoming uh, to see another mine up and running. Um, and that's going to help our permitting. Tremendous. Well, look, the Maiden Jork resource is extremely impressive. I mean, what stands out about the grade, scale and expansion potential for you? Yeah, we're very lucky to be able to produce uh, a globally significant Jork resource so quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Neobium space, we're probably the second highest grade uh, of a neobium jog resource in the world. Um, we think we've got 20-year mine life. Obviously, we need to do the scoping study to prove all that up. But 20-year uh, mine life is fantastic. And again, we're next door to CBMM, who's been making this product for, for decades. So very confident we'll be able to do that as well. Uh, in the rare earth space, the metrics are even more impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of tonnes, we've got 40.6 million tonnes, which happens to be exactly the same as uh, Mountain Pass Mine in California. And that's the project that uh, the U.S. Department of Defense has just done a multi-billion dollar deal with. So uh, in terms of scale, we're already as big as them. Uh, in terms of grade, our 4.13% head grade across the deposit is actually exactly the same as Linus's Mount Weld, which is the other big producer uh, in the Western world. So both in terms of grade and in volume, we're right up there with the, the big boys. Of course, they are producers and deserve their $10 billion market cap, but that's the vision we have to, to get to that level. Okay. And help me understand a bit more, right? So in terms of you said um, like the grade, yours is the second highest. Is that correct? Yeah. So uh, Neobium, you see CBMM's probably got the highest grade in the world. They're not mm -hmm. job resource. They're just a private company in Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, the other two producers are CMark in Brazil. Their head grade is about 0.45%. And uh, Neo Beck in Canada, they're about 0.43%. So our head grade is 0.68, and we're seeing it plus 1% growth in 
grades in the measured indicated portion of our resource. So very, very good grades. Uh, again, very similar to our next door neighbours and we've been making this product for years. Excellent. And those two other competitors that you refer to, they're already um, generating revenue, that it's already in production? Yeah, those other two are the only other two producers in the world mm -hmm. um, of any significance. So uh, our neighbours, CBMM, produce about 80% of the world's supply and those other two about 10% each. Okay, so those are very bankable numbers. Um, so now with mineralisation open in all directions, uh, what's the goal of your current drill program? Yeah, our goal is to basically expand the resource. We think we've mm -hmm. got a very good chance uh, to double the resource. So mm -hmm. I've just told you that we're already globally significant and uh, comparable to the majors, but we, we plan to actually double the resource and be even more significant. Uh, we will convert a lot of the um, inferred to the indicated category so we can get along with our scoping study and feasibility study as well. So a very exciting drill program. Uh, we've already announced uh, first assay results for the auger program. Uh, and we've hit some really high-grade um, mineralization, 13.5 metres at 12.3% TREO, which is just fantastic. Um, look, I, might, I have to ask you, you're very bullish when you, and you say with a lot of conviction that you're going to double the resource. So what is this backed by? Uh, well, we do have the main and drop resources already, mm -hmm. uh, and certainly we've sat down with the resource geologist and just had a good look at uh, where we think the expansion areas are. So uh, we've all come up with a plan uh, and we think it's it's quite doable. The mineralization is quite consistent, uniform throughout that carbonatite. Uh, and that's our target. Yeah. Thank you. Well, look, I want to get onto timelines now. So you've obviously talked about fast tracking the project. Um, what are the key milestones myself and the viewers and the investors can expect from you in the next six to 12 months? One of the positive features of the project is it's uh, great project logistics. So sure. uh, we're in an established mining region. That means we can really fast track uh, development. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a job resource. We're going to double it in the next uh, six months. Uh, we're going to do our metallurgical testing. That is a really big milestone in terms of showing the viability of the project. Uh, and hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have a scoping study or even a feasibility study. So these are all value adding um, milestones we'll be delivering uh, in the next few months. Okay, so you're basically saying between now and December, there's going to be quite a substantial amount of news flow? That's absolutely right. Uh, we're really on the ground doing all the hard yards mm -hmm. and we'll be delivering a lot of good news flow. Okay, so all the positive news flow reaches up until, let's say, December. Um, what can we expect from you in 2026 as well then? After that, uh, all well, that. <laughs> All that hard work will continue. So we'll do another drill program in 2026. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't think doubling the resource is the limit. We think there's actually a lot more there as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll be getting back on the ground drilling more. Uh, we've just discovered a new zone of mineralization to the far east. That is one kilometer away from the current uh, footprint of the, the mineral resource. So a great opportunity to prove up another area of mineralization. Permitting is, is really going to go into full swing next year as well. Uh, we've already started the environmental studies, geotechnical studies, uh, but that'll all get the tick of approval hopefully in the first half of the next year. Excellent. And look, how significant is the um, MOU with the state government in accelerating approvals and development? Because, I mean, you're talking about a whole new country here, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we're new to Brazil, but uh, we've quickly moved to integrate with the locals. Mm -hmm. uh, we've employed a number of uh, ex-CBMM senior executives, so they've given us a great connection okay. uh, to the industry. Uh, but the most refreshing thing is the, the attitude of the, the state government. So the, the government of Minas Gerais is very pro-business, very, very supportive of mining. Mm -hmm. uh, we've signed an MOU, basically a cooperation agreement, mm -hmm. where they will expedite our permitting in exchange for our investment in the state. They want to see more mining investment. They want to see a producing mine up and running. So a very, very refreshing approach from government. And um, I guess we spoke about it earlier. So, um, you know, in Brazil, so your team, can you expand a bit more around the team and the leadership team you have on the ground right there whilst obviously, you know, we're in Australia? And also tackling things like being able to speak Portuguese and also, you know, it's a very different cultural way of doing business as well, in spite of all of that reception we're receiving on the ground. Yeah. Um, 
So we've employed four engineers that used to be at CBMM. So these are very senior people, plus 20 years experience uh, in the industry. Uh, these are mine builders, mine operators. So that's exactly what we need. Uh, we've got our own geologists. We just need the mine builders. Uh, so experts in mineral processing, plant construction, etc. Mm -hmm. So exactly the kind of people we need to take us to the next level uh, with this project. Uh, all the Brazilians speak Portuguese, but I also speak English. The English is actually pretty good. Okay. Uh, they produce contracts basically side by side, uh, Portuguese and English. So it's actually very easy to do business over there. Um, we've had no, no problem so far. Thank you. Um, look, I'm very curious now. Look, um, niobium and rare earths are now obviously both critical minerals. Uh, you know, what role do you see St. George playing in the global supply chain? We have a great opportunity to be really up there as a prominent player. Mm. Um, again, in the niobium space, there's only three primary producers. Uh, our aim is to be basically number two in the world. Uh, we aim to produce about 10,000 tonnes of niobium a year, and that's currently what the number two man is producing. So we've got a great opportunity to be a very, very prominent uh, player in the niobium space. Uh, and in the rare earth space, um, the grade and volume of our deposit is really getting attention from uh, industry players or automakers, etc. Uh, we really can contribute there as well. Our advantage with the rare earths is that we have a hard rock carbonatite deposit. Uh, Mount Weld and Mountain Pass, the two producing rare earth mines in the Western world, are also carbonatite hosted. So they're high grade, small environmental footprint, easier to get into production than the large uh, bulk tonnage clay deposits. So uh, we have a real opportunity to be first to market in the rare earth space as well. Thank you. For all of our viewers who are probably now furiously Googling niobium, could you help me understand um, what is niobium used in and um, and also give us an understanding on what is the actual spot price of it at the moment? Yeah, so ne niobium is basically uh, an alloy. So it's added to steel to make better steel. It makes stronger, lighter steel. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes it less corrosive. Uh, and less heat resistant. So it's used in specialty construction applications, uh, very tall buildings, pipelines, uh, also in aerospace. Um, and it's also used, unfortunately, in military equipment, which is quite popular at the moment. So it's on the cone of missiles, um, in fighter aircraft, etc., where you need stronger, lighter, heat resistant steel. So big demand there. Uh, there's also a use of the more refined niobium, niobium oxide, in high-tech applications, such mm -hmm. as superconductive magnets, MRI equipment, and also in uh, lithium-ion batteries. So by adding a niobium oxide to the batteries, you uh, make them lighter. That's really important, particularly for big vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, also faster charging and longer life. So a uh, big growing demand for niobium. Tremendous. And um, in terms of like pricing, how bullish are you on it? Again, this is one of the advantages of the market for niobium. It's very supply constrained. So uh, the main player, CBMM, drives the price. Um, it's been increasing gently over the past 10 years and the projections are it'll continue to do so. So the current price is about 40 to $50 a kilo. Okay. Uh, but in the secondary market, you can be selling for up to $80 a kilo again, because it's so difficult to get a hold on. And um, in terms of like global demand, uh, where are the main regions? Are you seeing this demand come from primarily? Yeah, it's all around the world. Again, you can't find niobium uh, other than these three producers. So there's big demand out of China, of course, for their steel mills, mm -hmm. uh, but also in Europe for their steel mills. Uh, and in the US, uh, predominantly for uh, military equipment and uh, aerospace. So big demand worldwide and we've already had uh, end users knocking on our door ever since we announced the transaction okay. wanting to try it and get in the door and do some off-take deals with us. Great. So there's already off-markets demand? Yeah, absolutely. Typically in the ABM, you would sell uh, long-term contracts, about 50% of your production, and maybe the other stuff into the spot market. So uh, it's a great way of financing your uh, capital expenditure going forward uh, through off-take finance from these end users who are hungry to get supply. Thank you for explaining that, John. Um, look, you've secured a lot of strong local partnerships and industry collaborators. Uh, how do they support you on your path to production? Yeah, so we've signed uh, downstream partnership agreements with the two of the local scientific agencies, 
Senai and Embrapi. So they're helping us optimize the flow sheet so we can make uh, Ferrone Avium and Rare Earths. Mm -hmm. um, we've also signed up to the Magbras project, which is trying to establish Brazil's domestic rare earth supply chains and produce rare earth magnets domestically. Mm -hmm. Remembering that Brazil's a very big country, 220 million people. They make yeah. cars, they make aeroplanes, so they need their own domestic supply of, of rare earth magnets in this uh, world. Um, so we're part of that project as well as a potential supplier of the rare earth, rare earth material. Excellent. Um, look, I did some uh, research on you. I understand that you, um, you know, adjacent to your mining career, you were also in banking. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, before I uh, founded and started St. George, I was uh, doing finance uh, with an international investment bank. We were lending money to mining projects, mm -hmm. uh, acquisition finance, project finance, and also treasury products, gold hedging and other commodity hedging. So that's where I got my interest in the mining sector and then decided to start investing my money and try and uh, develop something from scratch in the, the mining world. You got the itch. <laughs> um, well, in that case, I'm now curious, obviously, you know, we have a lot of uh, mining CEOs that come from a very strong fiscal um, background. Um, I guess let's talk a little bit about the cash and the finances of St. George briefly. Like how are you guys positioned with all of this projected news flow into the next 12 months, how are you how how are you positioned fiscally and the disciplines that you bring to the table? Yeah, that's right. My my background uh, in the banking world means I'm probably the safe corporate pair of hands for the for the company, and I've surrounded myself with great engineers and geologists to do all the, the technical work. So, uh, my job is to make sure the company is well funded to to keep going forward. Uh, we've just raised five million Australian dollars to to make sure we've got enough funding to go aggressively in the build program that's currently underway. Yep. So they'll take care of the, the money requirements for the uh, medium term. Uh, inevitably, we'll have to raise more money at some stage, but hopefully the, the strong news flow we're delivering should uh, help us do that at a better price, um, less dilution for existing shareholders. Thank you, John. And let's talk about quickly your skin in the game. So you're very invested in St. George yourself? Yes, over the years, I've put quite a bit of my own money into the, the company, probably close to $3 million of my own money into the company. So I'm very, very motivated to make sure there's a positive outcome for investors. Mm -hmm. That's why we bought this project, the Arasha project. We mm -hmm. believe it offers a high multiplier return for investors. Uh, and we're very keen to deliver on that. Thank you for being so transparent, John. Um, look, uh, before we finish, so can you, is there any final messages that you have for any viewers? Um, or investors who are sitting on the sideline thinking on where to deploy the capital at the moment, um, what words do you have for them? Uh, this, as I said, is a company maker project for St. George. So uh, the market's starting to realise, I think, the, the potential. Our market cap has risen from about $30 million, uh, 12 months ago to $100 million now. Okay. Uh, strong news flow coming through. We're going to prove up uh, a bigger operation, a bigger resource. Uh, the pathway to commercialization. So that should just keep on adding to our um, market cap and the value of our share price. So I think it's a great time to be investing in St. George. Thank you, John. And I, I imagine your vision, we didn't talk about it earlier, but I'm curious, you intend on seeing this through to production? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Neobium in particular is a very easy to get into production, simple flotation process. So that one, we've got all the expertise we need to do that. Uh, rare Earth, we're just waiting for the uh, network to tell us exactly what to do there as well. But uh, the opportunity is there with mm -hmm. strong demand for these commodities. Uh, we're definitely going to push this as hard as we can. Wonderful. So, John, um, so I'm going to ask now any of our members, viewers or investors, if they have any questions, please email it to us, info at eastcoastresearch.com.au or shares in info at sharesinvalue.com.au and um, if we receive any inquiries we'll forward them through to you and your team is that okay yeah we'd love to engage with investors thank you thank and um i'll probably see you in six months and let's see how far you've come then thank you very much